The Lord be with you. Charles Tillian, a professor at Asbury, Asbury Theological Seminary in Wilmore, Kentucky, once described what he considered to be a mythological modern worship service to be. He described the service like this. Pastor, praise the Lord. Congregation, hallelujah. Pastor, will everyone please turn on their tablet, PC, iPad, smartphone, and Kindle Bibles to 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And please switch on your Bluetooth to download the sermon. There is a pause and some shuffling as people do as asked. Now, let us pray, committing this week into God's hands. Open your apps, Twitter, and Facebook, and chat with God. Now there is a longer silence. As we take our Sunday tithes and offerings, please have your credit cards and debit cards ready. You can log on to the church Wi-Fi using the password LORD111111. The ushers will circulate mobile card swipe machines among the worshipers. Those who prefer to make electronic fund transfers are directed to computers and laptops at the back of the church. Those who prefer to use iPads can open them. Those who prefer telephone banking, take out your cell phones to transfer your contribution to the church. The holy atmosphere of the church becomes electrified as all the smartphones, iPads, PCs, and laptops beep and flicker. And here is how Professor Killian visualizes the final blessing. This week's ministry cell meetings will be held at the various face group, Facebook group pages on Zoom and Ring Central meetings, the usual places where group chatting happens. Please log in and don't miss out. Thursday's Bible study will be held live on Skype at 1900 hours GMT. You can follow your pastor on Twitter this weekend for counseling and for prayers. God bless and have a nice day. When the professor wrote this, I am sure it was meant to be funny. But it sounds more like reality than mythical, doesn't it? Especially during the last 15 months. When the so-called worship wars began many, many years ago, the disagreements between traditional and, co and contemporary worship, I was concerned that the center of attention would move from the, the altar, the table of the Lord, to a big screen TV monitor. I was concerned that the powerful words of our traditional hymns would be erased from our minds and that our children would never learn them in the first place. Uh, I also remembered a story from the history of one of my churches. They bought a new sound system, new microphones and stands. Any of this sound familiar? New board, new speakers, the works. They were proud, and rightfully so. The Sunday came for the great unveiling of their new technology. The service was going well. People were excited and were really involved. Until it came time for the scripture to be read. And the Lord said, Would you like fries with that? Evidently, that church's new microphones were tuned to the same frequency as the McDonald's, which was less than a block away. The people told me that they heard a lot of people ordering food before they were finally able to fix the problem. Personally, I am grateful for the technology. 
it has allowed us to stay connected to each other during this age of masks and quarantine. It has broadened the outreach of our church. We can now share our worship services with anyone who cares to watch. We can outreach to the neighborhood children with lessons and stories designed especially for them. Our district superintendent has done a wonderful job keeping his clergy connected through monthly Zoom meetings. Every day, our bishop has sent a prayer to keep the people of our conference connected and faithful and encouraged. Well, we were forced into discovering new ways of doing ministry, and the church has responded with creativity and with love. I never thought I would be writing many sermons every weekday and delivering them as daily devotions, but I have been blessed both by the discipline and by the joy of it. And it wasn't even my idea. A member of the church came to me and suggested that I do it. God, thank you for such lay people. A man once said, I went to Las Vegas recently. I lost my car. I lost my house. I lost my watch. I lost my money. I lost everything but my good luck charm. Despite the hardship, when I look back, I see more gain than loss. We have been blessed to see how much we do love each other and miss seeing each other and hugging each other. We have had our dedication tested, but we have been found faithful. We have shared good news in bad times. Thank you all. Now the only question I have is, why did I ever sound surprised when I have a church like this one? God bless you all. Amen.